gear and goodies. Uh, Andy, go ahead and progress through some of these and try and give you just a, there's gonna be a lot of information on the slides, but we're gonna try and do this fairly quickly and give you guys more an opportunity to ask, ask questions again. Um, we can't cover every little detail there is that exists about, about possible gear, but just get through the essentials and uh, you will notice, <laughs> again, it's probably gonna be a little harder to read, uh, there are going to be some things that you definitely have to have, some things that are just merely re recommended. So, all right. Uh, this is are you going to send this out? For yeah, we will have, we'll have materials that we'll be emailing out to you. So along with what was mentioned earlier uh, regarding like fundraising stuff, uh, we'll, we will have uh, like handout materials or... Uh, I think we're actually sending out a survey. It's going to be one of the things you'll receive later today. So that survey is actually going to address this. So you don't need every little piece of gear because somebody else has a piece of gear and there's no reason for everybody to bring a fire starter, everyone to bring a first aid kit. That's just kind of absurd. It's unnecessary, especially with two dozen people. So uh, there are going to be shared items that we would say Somebody needs to bring it, but it doesn't necessarily have to be you. So when we send out the survey, that's going to give us a taste for who has what. Uh, we know with the amount of alumni that we have going and with us as guides, what kind of gear we have. Most of these things are fairly well covered. So if you have one of these, great. Please bring it. If you don't, then, uh, then you don't necessarily have to go out and, and acquire one. Uh, so tents, yeah, definitely need a tent, but again, we will be sharing. We, we don't have the capacity to have the footprint for everybody to have their own tent. So we'll be bunking up uh, most likely two to a tent. There might be some exceptions to that, but that'll be the general rule of thumb. Um, along with that, you want a footprint most definitely. That just means something to cover the ground underneath to keep it dry. Uh, the cooking materials, again, that this is the kind of stuff like uh, the stove, the water purifiers, those are things that we'll get in the survey. Um, first aid kits, we're pretty much set on. So cook set is one of those things that I, I might suggest. Uh, you at least need some basics, and actually I believe they're on the next slide. So when I say a cook set, I'm thinking more like a, uh, it looks almost like a small saucepan that you would use at home to cook with. You don't necessarily need something this large, right? But you do need some of the basics inside. So go ahead and go to the next. So kitchen set, that's really what you need. So this, what I have is a combination of both a, a cook set and a kitchen set, right? So I can use this to, to cook with. Most of the time, you're not necessarily going to be whipping something up in a pan like you're going to be cooking eggs or anything in this. We're going to be doing that as a group. We're going to have the uh, sit around a campfire. Andy will whip up some pancakes. We'll do some bacon and eggs or something. Like that. What All you're really going to do is something that you can boil the water in. Yes. That's something that we can share. I mean, each, we're going to split into two major groups, and each group really only has to have two, maybe three stoves and cover the whole group. So. so, what you will need is you want something. Some sort of like a bowl or a small plate with a bit of a lift to the profile. Something like a mug for coffee or tea or whatever you're doing. <laughs> uh, and then I appear to have misplaced mine, but some sort of serving utensil, right? So I just use like a simple plastic spork. It honestly works just fine for just about anything we need. So you really don't need more than just a few items. Um, you want them to be relatively durable, of course. But that's really what you need is a kitchen set, cook stuff stuff. If you have one of those or you happen to find a good deal on a set like that or you're borrowing something from a friend and it has those elements, then great. You don't necessarily need to go, go out here and buy a $60 full-fledged set that can feed a family. Um, so the big items, uh, kind of the main, the main staples, aside from your tent, is going to be your backpack. This one's a little bit larger than you'll be dealing with. This is probably more on par with the size that you would be looking at. It's about a 60 liter, 60 liter bag. So about, a, we'd say about a 40 to a 60 liter bag will, will suffice. Um, a sleeping bag. This is 
it in storage capacity. This thing will compress to be actually about this size. And then a sleeping pad. I'm just giving an overview. But the uh, sleeping pad, yeah, mine's actually about half that size uh, as far as how it, how it packs up. So those are the ones that you really, really need to make sure you're concerned about. The tent, backpack, sleeping bag, and sleeping pad. Then some of these other things, you probably honestly have most of these as far as your clothing goes. Um, let's see, let me see here. Hey, we're gonna send out lists or anything when you get in the week, so, um, and we'll definitely uh, answer any questions you might have if you've never gone on a trip like this. Um, but yeah, ask your friends that don't like it if you can borrow them. Uh, make sure to return it. Um, I, <laughs> I have things I can loan out, but we yeah. don't get something back, so I appreciate people returning, um, returning stuff. Yeah, um, we do have extra hiking backpacks. I think Mark still has. Yeah, we're gonna talk a little more about acquiring all this stuff uh, towards towards the end of this. So here's, here's clothing now. So uh, let's go over the. I'm gonna go over the bag real quick. Uh, I get asked about is it a certain brand or a certain weight or anything like that. Again, it's 40 to 60 liters. And check to make sure that it's sized correctly for you because oftentimes they'll have. You can get bags that have a fixed length for your torso. And the one of the most important things about a bag is that it's going to sit on your hips correctly. So if you get the wrong length, it's not going to sit on that correctly. Getting a long, this bag I've had for years, it was too long for me and it was killing my back. Thankfully upon getting a new bag, it, it fits quite a bit better. I think Steven will attest to the fact that this is not the most comfortable bag. It is oh, built. <laughs> it is built for somebody with a much longer torso than, uh, than Steven or I have. Um, yeah. Not great. No, it's not great. It, yeah, I mean, you can you can you can get by with just about anything, but why get by when you don't want to? You don't need to be waking up with kicks in your back. Oh, I can't roll over. That kind of stuff. That's not good. So, uh, something in addition to the bag that you want is what we call a duck back. So sometimes they'll come in a small container or packet like this that you can just clip on. It basically just covers the bag and keeps it watertight. More or less. So uh, you don't necessarily have to go buy a duck bag specifically. You can get by with, I mean, we've had people do ponchos. You basically just cover the bag. You can get by with things like that. So you're going to have to do the trash bag works. Yeah. So there, there, there's a lot of these items where you're like, oh, somebody here, out here or elsewhere might start to say, oh, you've really got to get one of these. And I would definitely recommend it, but you don't necessarily have to go chuck out a lot of money for something like that. Uh, if anybody really thinking to buy one, there is some bag like the can do that already. That what? They can't do the water bag already. Uh, yeah. Somebody's planning to buy one, that's an option. Though. Right. Yeah, a lot of them will come with, uh, or you, the manufacturer will offer one specifically for that size, or you can just go out and buy a generic one. Um, I think it's about 30 bucks, 20 bucks, something like that. But the pack itself is what's important. The duck bag self full. Day bag is, is also going to be super important, particularly the way our trip is set up this year. You want something that's going to be about this size. It just looks like a small, um, small backpack. And you're going to need something with a chest strap, preferably in both packs, but specifically for the day pack. Uh, knowing how you can hook up with your hydration is really important. So if you're to have a I don't think I actually brought it, but you'll have a what's called like a camelback or um, just a water reservoir. These, these come with a sleeve and you can basically slide it down in. It runs a hose around and you can be nibbling on the hose wire. Uh, so, the big, big thing about this is you're, you're really, it doesn't need to be very large. Uh, you just need to be able to fit some rain gear, some food. In your water because this, this is for the day so it doesn't even fit everything this is going to fit the bulk of your rest of your stuff your tent your sleeping bag and all that stuff uh trekking poles will be another item that i'd say i'd highly recommend you get these you and these are another one of those items that you don't need to go very expensive on i think the first several years i went hiking we got a, a 20 dollar pair from walmart and, and they'll work just fine um you can get nicer stuff in, Got a pair that's like a hundred dollars, they're super lightweight, they're real fancy, but you don't necessarily have to do that. They, they'll, they'll get by. The important thing is the stability, and uh, mainly the stability, but it also helps um, 
a little bit with momentum and driving uphill as well. So there's, there's some benefits. It'll save some impact on your knees going downhill, which is a huge benefit there. Uh, sleeping bag, uh, big thing we're gonna recommend is the, the temperature be like around a 20 degree bag, okay? So you can be like Brady was the first year and go get yourself a 15 pound uh, Coleman bag, you know, that no, you I'm might- saving money. <laughs> Was Brady was just trying to show off. He's like, ah, I'm carrying 80 pounds in my bag. It's no big deal. Uh, that thing was, you know, it, it looked like a hay bale, basically. And you just strap that on. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's not too bad because it had some extra padding. and it's, It was like having two sleeping beds for him, basically. But, but hey, you can do that. Um, I'm you, don't, you don't want to do that. You, you don't, you don't want to do that. I, I, I was saying, I was saying that sarcastically. Yeah. You can do that, but don't, but don't do that. Uh, again, you can... This is, I would say, a pretty solid bag, pretty lightweight. Um, but I've, I've, I've gone on trips with uh, like a $20, $30 bag from Dick's Sporting Goods. So you can get by with more, less than you think. Yeah? You know, this is a trick question because Colorado and the Weeks are pretty similar to last year, so we're about a month apart. So. Um, As in varying and differing I mean, multiple like, times throughout the day? Yes, I expect that all the time. Sleeping conditions. It'll probably, yeah, probably be a smidge cooler. Okay. Uh, but a 20 degree bag should about do it for you. A, an add-on that you could get if you're, well, two things to keep in mind with sleeping arrangements is, uh, A, you can wear long johns or something else to insulate your body temperature a little bit better. Um, that's on you, I mean, like yoga pants or whatever, I don't care. Uh, the other thing would be a sleeping bag liner. So Andy's a big fan of these. You just slip them over, or is it over or under? It's yes. basically a, a real thin yeah. polyester silk bag that you get in, that you then get in your sleeping bag. Yeah. It, it will help your it's a sleeping bag, bag within a sleeping bag. 10 degrees, so and they're not expensive. And you go to Academy for $10, and then I'll take your bag for so really, really good. Uh, so that's pretty much your bags, your poles, uh, your sleeping bag. Sleeping pads, you have a few different options as far as what you get. Uh, you can get something like this, it's like a thermarest where it basically has a foam sponge inside and when you open the, the nozzle a little, it'll inflate or if it's super old like mine, it's gonna basically uh, need a little bit of assistance to get it going. Uh, you can also get a foam pad and that pad is going to be just set to the side, so you're not, you're gonna be stuck with it, not com uh, compacting into your bag, but you'll have to most likely strap it on the outside. Uh, I'd say the third type or style doesn't really have a foam or insulation in it at all, and it's pretty much, it's just gonna require air to be blown into it. Now this one has a, what's called a speed valve. Um, we don't need to get into the details of all that if you have questions about that, I can answer them later. But those are gonna be pretty much your three types of bags. It's gonna be a, a foam, uh, in an, an inflatable one, or one that's kind of a combination where it has a foam inside and an in, in inflatable. Um, it's not necessarily one that's say better than the other, you just lose weight in size. Uh, probably more important, or at least something in my mind with the sleeping pads, is you want it to be insulated because you can have a nice cushy inflatable pad or whatever, yeah. but if it's not insulated, all the cold air is going to seep up from the ground and you could have a a zero degree bag, you might still be cold. So if you're buying one, you would probably want to go insulated. Yeah, that's true. So these these uh, types of pads, you can get them insulated or not insulated. So what he would be recommending, I would agree, is air on the side of getting one that's insulated. A foam pad obviously is just kind of what it is, but a lot of times they're made with like an emergency blanket type material where it has that kind of shiny metallic sense. Uh, so bags. So let's get to, I'm gonna to touch on uh, lighting. You will need a flashlight, but I would definitely recommend getting a headlamp. You can, one I've recommended to people the last several years, and I think actually last year a few of you guys got the specific model that I recommended. Because you can get it for about $20 on Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's a Princeton Tech model. It's real, real simple, easy to use. Uh, multiple multiple uh, settings to, really adjust for whatever, if you're in a tent, you don't want to shine it in your roommate's eye, um, or if you're, oops. It will get dark early there because the same yeah. as the, the 
um, sun hits the mountain, it's dark. So it doesn't can't shine over that. So sometimes it'll be dark by seven o'clock. And then okay, I don't want to get that in there. I'll have some extra batteries, but bring some extra batteries is always a good call. Yes. Good call, Eric. You want to have the I mean, I would make that <laughs> because you don't want to be hiking up with a, a flashlight in your hands. Yeah. So, um, so we usually start with the dark side. So, yeah. And quite honestly, that's probably been one of the more useful items that I've had outside of hiking. I've used it for other things like, oh crap, the lights go out in the house, or I have to work on something in my car, or whatever. Yeah, it's just like, they're very they're very useful. In fact, I've been using them on Second Saturday for a while, and I lost one there, and tried to get another one, but that was my own fault. So, we're, uh, yeah, so clothing. One thing I'll touch on before driving through this is compression sacks and stuff, it's just how do you get your, your clothes in. You can get an actual compression sack, or what I tend to do is I just use my day pack and I compress my clothing into the day pack. Another thing I've used is those drawstring bags that you just throw over your shoulder and tighten up. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else to refer to them as other than just a drawstring bag. Um, something like that will work just fine. The beauty of that is uh, I, I double that as my pillow. So I just throw my clothes in. I have that in my pillow, and I don't need a compression sack, and I don't need a separate pillow. It just keeps things simple and whatnot. Some people are very particular about that, and they're not going to sleep really well without that. Totally understand. You can get a travel pillow, or you can get specifically one that's uh, going to be inflatable uh, of that, that style that will allow you to get a good night's rest. That's kind of important. So if that's, if that's going to be an issue for you, if you know how you sleep, then by all means do that. I'm just giving you some options to think through that'll save you some money and space in the back. So for time Yeah, so these are these are really pretty straightforward. There's not much to this, uh, just other than layers. Like what I'm wearing right now is pretty close to what I'd be wearing there. I'll probably wear in a dry fit as opposed to like a cotton shirt. Um, the big tips that I would I would encourage you with is gloves are gonna be super handy. You can get something like these. Those are just mechanic gloves that you get for like eight bucks at just about anywhere. Uh, you don't need to go spend thirty to fifty dollars that somebody might be selling for like a fancy pair of uh, running running gloves or hiking gloves or something like that. These work great. We like to turn gloves up on this trip. Because yeah, you're and like grabbing on the rocks and stuff just as you go around things, so it's easy to tear them. So don't go and buy really expensive like ski gloves or anything because you're likely to. And I mean, I've had these for years, and they're like barely starting to get holes in them. And I, so they they laugh, they hold up really well. They're well worth their value. Um, you want a couple uh, again things that are light. Dry fit is always going to be a win. So pretty much anything you can get dry fit. Things that you can get. You know, it's like these these pants are considered convertible pants. I can change layers really quickly with the changing weather. We might be hiking early in the morning where it's dark, it's very cool, and then the sun comes out and all of a sudden it's really warm. So just being able to change um, change layers like that really easy. Don't get thick, super thick layer. Like don't bring a Michelin Man winter jacket type of thing. I know it's going to get cold, but what you want to do is layer up. So that's really the key is when you're looking through these items is just layer up. So I'm wearing a dry fit, short sleeve, long sleeve, something like this that adds some warmth and layer. And then I would actually throw on a layer like this on the outside. So I'm wearing three layers or maybe I throw on a short sleeve and long sleeve and I've got four layers on. It doesn't look super thick. It's I still have a lot of mobility, but I can peel off the layers really easily based on the layer. Yeah, in the mountains, the temperature varies, and that, that temperature swing can change within 30 minutes. It can go from sunny in 70 to rainy in, in 40, 40 yeah. um, like that. So um, layers are important, and they also help save money. You don't have to have a jacket, you just keep going so long, and you're good. Um, so the keys are really, uh, dry fit materials are better just because your body temperature is going to be fluctuating, and you want to be able to breathe well and sweat well, so that's where dry fit's nice. Plus, it's probably gonna get wet for some reason or another, and it'll dry faster than some other material. And your outer layer is the other thing where I'd say, just make sure whatever your outer layer is, is you get a rain jacket, or uh, this wasn't specifically a rain jacket, but I've tested it out enough to know that it, it holds up against the rain, the rain, the rain. I don't know where I'm going with that. You rain uh, pretty well. Uh, so shoes is probably the most important thing you're going to deal with. Like a lot of these clothes you guys most likely have or could easily uh, 
easily get access to. The shoes is going to be the big thing. So there's really three types of shoes. Uh, you guys will notice, I'd say something like what Raul's wearing. I call it more like a uh, like a trail running shoe. Sure. <laughs> Uh, something that it just looks like a sneaker and it's got a little bit of tra special traction on the bottom, something like that. Uh, the second type of shoe would be more so what, what I'm wearing. There you go, Raul. Uh, so this would be more of a, a, a low cut, a low profile shoe, a uh, hiking shoe. And the third one will be a, basically this, but high cut, so with ankle support, as Jessica is showing off back there with her yoga skills. She's just like sticking them straight here. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> um, sidebar Jessica will be offering a yoga class while we're up there when you guys are getting stiff. So, <laughs> uh, so my recommendation would probably be go for the third option if you don't know. If you're like, I don't know, I haven't hiked a lot before, I'm not sure what I'm comfortable with, go with a high cut. That's gonna offer the ankle support, reduce the likelihood of you rolling the ankle. Uh, for me, I, I've gotten comfortable with these. I've been a long distance runner and been backpacking for so many years. I know where my footing is and I feel much more comfortable in this than I would in that. But that's not necessarily going to be applicable. So if you have more experience, you can do that. Brady's done this enough. He knows what's comfortable with his feet. And that's, that's great. Uh, I would probably recommend avoiding the, if you don't have any hiking experience, you're not, comfortable, not sure what you're going to be comfortable with, going with the trail running kind of sneaker like option. They do sell shoes out here and elsewhere like that and those can work in certain circumstances but they're not going to necessarily have the additional padding uh, that, that a shoe like this might and you're going to be kicking rocks and stubbing, stubbing your toe is, is going to be a problem. So yeah, Gore-Tex is good. Uh, if you can get it, awesome, but a lot of shoes, you can get some pretty well-made shoes that have uh, their material. That, like, this doesn't actually have Vortex on it. Yeah. So, kind of mixed feelings about the, the, water, the waterproof. I'd probably recommend it for most. Um, there, there's a school of thought that, that differs from that in the sense that if it's not waterproof, it, it'll allow your foot to dry faster. Um, so I do understand kind of both. We're, we're likely to be hiking through some snowfields this year. Yeah. So um, I, I would recommend going with that heavier boot, um, something that can shed some moisture but be breathable. Um, definitely don't come down to chocolate unless you really want to. Yeah, the the other thing with that though is, is it's not just the shoe, it's it, how's water getting into your shoe or how's snow getting into your shoe. So uh, having long socks that are keeping your feet warm and dry is, is going to be important. Smart wool, something like that is great. Wool socks are, are great and highly recommended for this. Don't, don't go with cotton socks or wool socks. Yeah, don't do that. I can list a huge long list of wool socks. Um, the other thing you can get, or if, if, your, if your pants uh, allow for this, a lot of times they'll, you can tighten them up or cinch it up to, to cover your ankle area. Also, if you're getting the high cut boots, it makes it a lot easier. So you're just kind of covering on your bases to reduce the likelihood. You can get things like gaiters, uh, where it slides over your ankle and basically keeps pebbles and dirt and snow from getting in. And that could be helpful as well. Uh, but that's more of those optional things. So the last thing here would be, uh, if you know you have a prior injury or something like that, you want to make sure you bring a knee brace, uh, ankle brace, uh, and any sort of support that is required to reduce that from happening. It's something you're like, oh, it hasn't aggravated me in years. I've been in that camp, it hasn't aggravated me in years, and all of a sudden, whoa, my knee feels a little weird. Just because you're dealing on uneven terrain and it's going to throw things off and your body's not going to um, be accustomed to it, and it might just tweak something and re-aggravate it. But if you're preemptive with that, you bring a, a sleeve or a brace or whatever support you're comfortable with or what level of support you need, that's going to help uh, reduce the likelihood of that being an issue. Yeah, I wear knee braces, just the knee sleeve, just to reduce the shock coming down the mountain because I'll do this for years after years, so not, not a bad idea if you, if you just have to use them all to break something. Yeah. Uh, for the shirts and the shorts and everything, mm -hmm. like just one for the week, right? Like one short sleeve, one long sleeve? Yeah, <laughs> okay, good question. So, uh, typically what I'll do is, um, Actually, let me touch on that in a minute because I'm going to address kind of an overview of the totality of what you need to bring for the week as far as the size of the um, So real quick, 
toilet seats, most of these are pretty common sense. You guys have traveled enough, you get these. Uh, the couple that you might not think of are uh, really the importance of lip balm and sunscreen. That will save your <laughs> save your skin and save you a lot of uh, a lot of pain. Um, the, <laughs> yeah, well, that was my own fault. Uh, yeah, I definitely made some. I made some poor decisions, and you get burned a lot easier because you are um, well, effectively, you're closer to the sun. Not you breathing, but you're burning. I mean, that's that's really the sort of. Uh, so you was didn't treat you so well. Yeah, I. Oh man, poor Brady was like had to deal with me rolling over all the time because. Uh, yeah, it, it's uncomfortable when you have to do that. He wore a sleeveless shirt, high like mountain, they, they stayed the same temperature. It was comfortable temperature-wise. It was just, yeah, so that's where there's kind of some misgivings about it. You're like, oh, the comfort, it's comfortable, there's a nice breeze, and oh yeah, but you're also roasting like a, like a chair. So, uh, something you might not think of, again, just it depends. You're going to have people out here sawing logs, let's just be real. There's two dozen people, there's different noises with nature. Um, <laughs> So you, if, if that's something you, you, you're like, well, normally I don't think about that because I'm sleeping at home with no roommates and I don't have extra noise around me, you're going to have a lot of extra noises and stuff. So <laughs> for the sake of your sleeping comfortably, something to consider. Uh, the biggest thing is probably going to be the trowel and the toilet paper. So you can go out and buy special travel size toilet paper. You don't need to do that. You can just get a regular, size, a regular toilet paper roll. Uh, usually what we recommend is wear it down until it's about half as big as it normally is. Because if you get that three plus Charmin bundle, like you can't fit that in a Ziploc bag, let's be real. But you work one of those down about halfway, kind of crunch it, fold it in half, stick it in a sandwich size Ziploc bag, you're good to go. Um, you know, bring more than one, but uh, usually you just need to pack one in the bag and then maybe keep a couple extra in the vehicle that you can replenish it. We're going to cover how to use all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Up and then, but I have not been involved in that, but we'll, we'll cover how to use it. The trowel. Sorry, trowel. You can, you can bring like a garden kind of trowel if you want, but these are super light, low profile, and easy to work with. Another handy dip, tip is uh, you can pop these in the ground, slide the toilet paper roll over it, and kind of wheel it off. It's the white sort of zip. Yes. I don't know what that means. Uh, so, plastic bags, uh, use like sandwich, uh, sorry, sandwich bags, gallon Ziploc bags, um, what am I thinking? Grocery bags, just something you might get from Walmart, Kroger's, whatnot. Something like that is going to be really handy for packing a lot of these things, your personal items, your clothing, just keeping things separate and clean because you're, you're going to be rotating your clothes out of your bag. Target bags are a little bit thicker. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're a little bit thicker than Target bags, so stuff like that. Just keep in mind that Ziplocs uh, are a lifesaver. Uh, if you're bringing a phone and you need a, a small like, battery backup or something like that, depending on how many pictures you're taking with your camera, just something to keep in mind. So, okay. All right, so we kind of touched on this a little bit. There's certain things you do not want to wear and certain things you do, uh, or and that we don't want to bring. Um, try to stay away from cotton. Again, things that are going to breathe and be water resistant or dry faster. That those are those are what you're looking for. Um, flannel. It does attract bears. I don't know if you knew this, but that's that's what I'm completely kidding. <laughs> uh, it. Uh, no, I think uh, honestly, the bears, the bears feel like some some level of comfort with lumberjacks. They just kind of look so much alike. Well, things like this are okay to wear around our base camp when you're actually up on the mountain. Yeah. It's don't bring it because they're cotton. Yeah, but generally, I'd say like. Late in the evening, if you just want to chill, have a have a section. So it's a little bit of a joke, but generally, like flannel or something like that is most likely going to be thicker than you really want comfort like. Why is cotton bad? Uh, it's not going to breathe quite as well, so. Well, and uh, it's going to dry a little bit slower. So I'm not saying I'm not saying we can't. I'm just saying we wouldn't recommend it. What about cotton socks? Definitely not cotton socks. I will try to stay away from that. So you won't listen like, to wear cotton socks. Yeah. So it's blisters. Um, keeping your feet dry. We also ask as far as electronics go. Um, nothing bigger than a small tablet. Isn't like bringing laptops. And that's not. This is. There's two things. This is not a vacation, and this is not a work trip. So those are kind of the two extremes we're trying to avoid here. I mean, it will feel like a vacation in some, some points, and it will be a lot of fun. Um, 
But this isn't just to kick back and watch Netflix. Like that's not. That's well, not that happen. Happen. Yeah, that's also not going to happen anyway. Kind of like um, yeah, it's just taking up space. But you want to bring a tablet or something to read while you're in the vehicle? Totally understandable. Um, but the music. The question about how many sets of clothes. Yeah. I two so, sets of hiking clothes is probably fine. Um, I like having what I call my my wet set, my dry set. That if I get in good training, I have these ones here that's dry. Um, I can rotate them throughout the week. So um, surprisingly, with the dry, cold air, you don't get that stinky up there like you would if you were here. Um, so. Two sets of clothes. You slide the frog mountain off the mountain. Um, two, three sets of clothes. Traffic with. Um, uh, get an action. Uh, so basically, rule of thumb, less is more. It really is. We'll, we'll talk through packing at our uh, so two training sessions from now. Our next one's a practice hike. The one thereafter is uh, is actually how to pack the bag and make sure. That's when we're kind of reviewing and assessing stuff to make sure that you're not taking extra stuff you don't need, or in case you happen to miss something. So we're going to stuff you guys don't want to know. Um, <clears throat> right, anywhere. So these are uh, a couple of resources for where you can go. Again, we're going to have this sent out to you so you have the availability to look at some of these. These are just some kind of major retailers that you can go online and look at. Obviously, we're in REI, and you can go out here and get quick access to things. Uh, yeah, I need to update that. Sorry, it's said early June. They're having the garage sale today, so if you guys are interested in so the this, garage sale, you can just walk over and, and go take a look at what kind of things they have. And the garage sale is... Basically, somebody bought something and went, oh, I didn't like the color, I didn't like the size, I didn't like whatever, and they went and returned it. Sometimes there's damages, but it's Our a great option. Sorry, I have no question of return policy, so you can buy some um, stuff for this yeah. yeah. So if I've never gone hiking or camping before, do I need to spend like a thousand dollars? No, nope. no you don't. So the, the this, this would be kind of the, the order of priority I'd say. First is uh, check and see what you have. You probably have more than you think. Uh, and to be honest, you dig through, you realize that as far as clothing goes, there's things you can get by with. Um, sometimes you might even have something that'll function perfectly fine as a small backpack or a day pack. <clears throat> uh, secondly, is if you don't, see if you can borrow it from somebody. You're going to have friends that have gear, uh, may not may not come to mind immediately, but you, you probably have somebody that, that has something. If, if not, then Part of what we're doing as far as taking the surveys to get a feel for who has what or who has maybe some extra items. So we do have a handful of extra things floating around, an extra backpack, an extra tent, things here and there. So then you can just ask us and we'll try to see what we can get our hands on. Um, if it comes down to buying it, you don't, you probably don't need to buy everything. Uh, like a couple of the main staples, I would say get a decent pack or a decent bag. But a lot of these other things, you don't need to buy something from an outdoor store per se. You can you can get by with going to a, a lower priced item uh, at, a, at a different store. You can get them on one of these discount websites. You can um, something else that Andy's a big fan of is going on something like OfferUp or Five Mile or Facebook Marketplace has actually become fairly decent as far as getting access to stuff for way cheaper. It's just like everybody makes a New Year's resolution, buys a treadmill, and you see it at a garage sale a year later. People are doing the same thing with outdoor gear, and uh, so you'd, be, you'd really be surprised at what kind of deals you can get. I've been able to buy most of the stuff that I have. At, I got this at the garage sale. Um, I got this for like fifty, sixty dollars cheaper than retail. So you, it, it doesn't take a lot of work to find that you can get a better deal on some of these things. And REI is great if you want to have gear that lasts a long, long time. So if you're planning on doing this over and over and over, it's worth the extra cost. But if this is something that you're looking at doing once, maybe twice, it's perfectly fine to go to the academy and get, get a sword of or something like that. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to go and get a tool for a I still like it, I got a brand pack that's older than I am, or about older than I am, so I mean, I'm, I'm cool with that. So, all right, so, uh, so, uh, the, the food. so food. Uh, as we stated, we're going to be covering kind of major group meals throughout uh, throughout the week, mainly um, mostly like breakfast and dinner a lot of days. Uh, there will be other days though where you may need some something for breakfast or for lunch. If we're out on a day hike, you're going to need snacks for that. We, uh, we'll also be providing some snacks as well. But we've just come to realize that there's 
varying allergies, varying things. So we try to accommodate that as much as we possibly can, but we realize that sometimes people are just really picky about what they eat, and so trying to get the same food and assuming that two dozen different people are going to all enjoy it. <laughs> and so we're going to give you a little bit of freedom in that, yeah. and uh, we'll, we'll give you guys some of, some basic stuff to, to get you started as far as your snackage, but you're going to So uh, lunch-wise, th these are a couple major things you'll see are dehydrated packs or possibly MREs. Um, if you're more adventuresome, I'd say, hey, you could try an MRE, but most of the time you're probably just going to want to try like a dehydrated food. Or Mountain House. It's not entirely true. But most of the truth. The uh, Mountain House is just an example. There's probably several different brands. Uh, they sell back, uh, back, uh, back country. Sorry, back country is one of them. Um, so it's not. Don't be too particular about the brand. They're they're all really not. I haven't noticed too much of a difference between from brand to brand. It's more so what is the type of food and is it going to be something that you're going to enjoy or is going to settle well. And we'll give you a list of what quantities and what you need. Yeah, we will be, we'll be giving you that detail uh, later on as we map out the week and kind of go in here. Here's what we were able to cover as far as the group meals and here's the base that you're going to need that. We will um, be providing like, your dinner meals, the non-backpacking the non portion. So two older guys in my church are going to be there and cooking um, those meals. They're not like me and our kids, so we'll come back and I'll eat and we'll go back to our camp. Um, but it's, it's, I like to feed people well, so you're going to eat and look good. I get that anybody you want to talk to. There's usually not breakfast, right? You just grab something. Yeah, I think breakfast and lunch are grabbing good stuff. Unless you just want to wake up at 2 in the morning to cook, so we can leave at 3 in the morning. I mean, that's your prerogative, but grab a go for breakfast. We're going to eat lunch up on the mountain. We'll be back in plenty of time for dinner, and we'll eat really good for that way it makes up for whatever yes. um, grab and, and some days we will have a breakfast if it's not a uh, day hike that day. Correct. So we're talking more so for the days that we have a day hike, you want a breakfast bar or um, just like a protein bar, things like that that are simple, easy to consume. Uh, so here's just a couple examples or tips. You can get anything that's light and easy to pack that you're not concerned about. Uh, having a problem with the altitude change. So getting something that has uh, a potato lot of, chips are a good idea. yeah, potato yeah. chips, things that are, you know, you bring in, bring in like a sub and a, a bag of Lay's, you know, that's gonna get all messed up in your bag. But you can get away with things like uh, tuna packets, you can get these for like a dollar or one more, uh, little thing of ramen, things like that that are just quick, simple to make, easy to eat, uh, you're gonna, Gonna save you some time and not they shouldn't take up too much space in your bag. That's the goal. Is don't don't get the stuff that's like, oh I need a full full course meal, no microwaves, you can't bring a hungry man and this is not gonna happen. Uh <laughs> good work. So yeah, big thing is you don't want a lot of protein. Uh you you also because you're sweating so much, you're gonna you're gonna wanna replenish uh like your, your body's gonna need more salt than you think. So maybe you don't, not a big uh, salt snacker, but getting crack, you know, salty crackers or any, anything that's gonna have sodium in it is, is actually gonna be helpful. You, you may not be going to the bathroom as much as you think, just throwing that out there because you just yeah. sweat most of your um, stuff out. But also mm -hmm. know that if you have a really high fiber breakfast by the time you get towards the peak, that would be a very fun experience. So. <laughs> It's okay to bring cheese. There's that. Uh, so again, we're just looking at things that is it is it light? Is it quick? Is it easy to pack? I mean, it, it, in some respects, it kind of looks like you're talking about a convenience store diet, and that's not exactly what we're saying. But at, at the same time, things that are small and travel well will uh, will be beneficial. Not trail mix, beef jerky's all good. Don't worry so, about calories as far as having. To limit your calories, you want the opposite to go high calorie. Yeah, yeah. So, in summary, it's basically going to be high calorie, high protein, uh, sodium, and electrolytes are two things that your body's going to be lacking. So, replenishing those is great. So that's why you say like these Gatorade packets can be good. Uh, sometimes we'll get a small container and, and dish them out. Those can be just a little bit messier though. These are nice and simple and convenient. Um, coffee is that's on you guys. Uh, we're not necessarily going to be, we're not going to be heating up a batch for everybody in the morning in your local office that you work in. Uh, 
and everybody has their various caffeine needs. So you can buy them the Starbucks videos, if you're a big Starbucks fan, you can buy the three dry coffee, which is actually surprisingly good. Um, but, but, I mean, caffeine and altitude, um, and also hydration can be an issue, so if you can go without caffeine, I'd just say go for it. But, uh, no, we are going to be getting up a little in the morning, but it's kind of nice whenever you're hiking, you don't realize how far you've covered because you're in kind of a zombie mode. So. We'll also be going to bed a lot earlier than you're probably accustomed to, so yeah. your sleep schedule is going to shift. Um, cool. So that that was that was it for uh, gear and goodies as far as I know. We try to cover a lot there, but any any questions about any of that right now? Any gear that you want to know about getting? Anything? Yeah. So you guys are going to do checks on velocity. Yep. So the idea is like for example, you say uh, tuna pack. If I want to eat dinner pack for the seven days of lunch, I bring seven pack and I take only one on a day hike. Sure. Okay. Right. Yeah. Another pack of seven stays six stays in the dump pack. Yeah, we're going to uh, be replenishing our stuff pretty frequently. So we're not going to be carrying every ounce of everything we have the entire week. We're going to be able to come back to the van, swap what we need out, and go. Um, that that would be more of our strategy to keep supply. Thank you. Thank you. So generally, a, a rule of thumb I might use is I try to fit all of my snacks in about a one gallon Ziploc bag. Um, and that should pretty much hold me up for the week. And you can pack that thing pretty cool and get a lot, a lot more in there than you realize. Uh, but we'll still have extra in the vehicle in, to replenish that if, if that gets depleted. Yeah. Cool. Any, any other questions?